and a dog who was rescued from a Korean meat market. Pretty much had a terrible life. He's now turning his new neighborhood into a danger zone for other dogs. Right now, we have another urgent case. A young couple with a dog that wants to attack any dog that comes near him. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? My name is Olga Diaz. My name is Oscar Stewart. Our dog's name is Sho Nuff. He's an Akita Shepherd mix. He's about a year and 10 months now. We adopted Sho Nuff from the San Francisco SPCA about three months ago. The Humane Society rescued Sho Nuff along with some number of other dogs from a Korean meat farm. Korean meat farm is a farm where they grow dogs for slaughter to eat. Pretty much had a terrible life then, but we don't know for how long before he was rescued. My favorite thing about Shonuff is his affection, for sure. He cuddles with you all day. He's very calm inside and listens to commands. But Shonuff's major issue is that he's extremely dog aggressive. <laughs> no! So He's unpredictable, and we can't bring him near dogs because we don't know if he's going to attack. Also, he's just very anxious. Whenever we go on walks, he's just always stressed out and alert all the time. It's as if he's hunting 24-7. He doesn't relax. He's not having fun. He's just alert, waiting for something, whatever it is. When Shonuff sees another dog, he'll growl. He might bark at the dog. And then he does complete flips. And then the second the dog's gone, he's back to normal. But the worst thing that's happened with Shonuff is that he's attacked Nala, a neighborhood dog. He chased her down, jumped on top of her, wouldn't let her move, and he kept trying to attack her, and he wouldn't stop even after we pulled him off. And that was really scary. I think he would attack a dog regardless of if it's a 15-pound puppy or if it's a 115-pound mastiff. I don't think he understands or cares. He wants at all dogs. No, no. The worst case scenario is that Shonuff is going to injure a dog. Or Shonuff is not the baddest dude on the block. He could get hurt too by another dog. Caesar, we need your help because we really want Shonuff to have a happier life, given the terrible life he's had in the past. It's horrible the way certain countries treat dogs. So people try to compensate what they didn't have. And then the human end up becoming sad about it, so the dog becomes strong. They don't rationalize. Yeah. They just know that you're sad. So a human has that creativity and creates a story. Mm -hmm. You just have to go from yeah. story to reality. Huh. And so that way you become confident. Because when you're I not see. confident, then you're unsure. Yeah. I always say calm and assertive. Mm -hmm. So right now you're not assertive. We might have 50%. Unsure. Mm -hmm. So that unsure uh. becomes weakness. You have to change yeah. the way you think, and then that changes your energy. OK. You ready to start? Yeah. OK, let's go. Definitely. I'm going to begin by walking Shonaf past the neighborhood dog he recently attacked. Oscar and Olga need to see the difference between how I walk the dog with confidence and how their insecurity creates a negative reaction. Come on, Sho. Hey. Shh, shh, shh. Olga and Oscar rescued their dog from a meat market overseas. No. But their sympathy for Shonaf is affecting his behavior, turning him aggressive around other dogs, even attacking their neighbor's dog, Nala. OK, bring him to me, Olga. Number one, you need the right energy. In being calm, you can also come across passive. So you have to be assertive mm. and confident. OK. Yeah. Makes sense. OK, now let me show you. The first thing Caesar had us do was to introduce Shonuff to his arch nemesis, Nala, a big white Samoa dog who's got high energy. And my initial thought was, this is going to be some trouble. Here. Shh. So now I touch that, look. So now before he gets engaged, shh. now you can practice shh. avoidance. So now you start controlling. When you smell, when you hear, when you see that dog, this is what I want you to do. Got it. Right there. As soon as he pays wow. attention, I touch a different area so he doesn't focus too long. Come on. So voluntarily moving. Now we come, just hold it right there. Now we pass him by. 
Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Caesar walked Shonuff right by Nala, and he was really comfortable doing so. It's really hard to believe. That's amazing. <laughs> so wow. different? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Shonuff was really calm. I've never seen that. I thought that Caesar was going to fail, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. I was wrong. <laughs> I'm going back to work on Shonuff. Rescue from a South Korean meat market, his owners are stuck in a state of sympathy that's making the dog act aggressively to all the neighborhood dogs. It's time to learn how to walk Shonaf past other dogs properly. It's all about the energy. You also have to learn to assess and evaluate the situation. Long line, right, so the dog is excited. Mm -hmm. You bring it to the other side, so you create a barrier. So in order for you to minimize the projection that that dog will share, you go in between. So in the, hey. Yeah, so that, no matter how they react, you can control how they perceive. So then eventually that bark means relax. Now we're going to pass by that. Yeah. So we pass him by. Watch what, watch what happens when we pass by the energy. Okay. Wow, he's not even looking back. Yeah. Wow, look at his ear. That's done. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so and then, <laughs> and of course, the more you do this, <laughs> That's beautiful. Come on, you do it. Here. Now, if, if you pull, if you pull, you pull up, up. Feel it, feel it. Right there, there you go. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Your body language is like this, so you tend to quit. I didn't quit worrying about him. Of course. Blind people can't look at the dog, but they still control the dog. So you don't have to look at the dog, you have to feel the dog. Uh, okay. The light bulb moment for me came on when Caesar talked to me about my body language. I'm just sort of passive with the dog, so I can't be so passive that that energy doesn't, I'm not taking control of the dog. Okay, Olga, now it's your turn. Vamos. Pasa y pasas por acá. Eso, ahí. Está un poquito muy fuerte eso. <laughs> okay, le vas a quitar la cabeza al perro. <laughs> Cálmate. <laughs> tranquila, mujer, tranquila. Sí. When you pass by here, poof, it was too. It's okay. more like a reminder. Okay. Oka did okay, but she's still too nervous. And that's why she pulled so hard on the leash when she tried to correct the dog. Nervous and tense. You're tense, she's nervous. <laughs> okay. Got it. Here you go. Try again. Eso! Hey, hey, hey! Ahora sí. Ahora sí. I definitely learned to be more confident and more in power, but at the same time, still maintaining a level of, of calmness. And I have more confidence and faith that, that he's going to do better around dogs. This is the most relaxed I've seen the dog outside ever. So I, I'm really encouraged. Excited to go practice. So f the first day is more for you to see what's possible. Okay. Yeah. It's to understand how technique can work, but the most important part is energy. I see. Yeah, the most important part is not to live in the past or the future. Okay. It's to be present. I see. I think Olga and Oscar are beginning to see what they need to change. But Shonaf needs much more exposure to other dogs before he's going to be safe around them. I need to bring Shona from San Francisco to my dog psychology center in Los Angeles. Bueno, wow. un abrazo y te Muchas veo. Muchas gracias. So we can take the next step safely by working with my dogs off leash and a controlled atmosphere. <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and join me on my mission of better humans, better planet. <laughs>